Oh, let's go. Yes. <laughs> G'day, welcome to Fishing. Michael Guest here. I'm going to have a bit of an afternoon snapper session with the soft plastics, my favourite way to catch them these days. And uh, snapper have turned into this fantastic sport fish uh, simply through really through the gear that we're using, the fact that we use polyethylene or braid these days, um, the super light uh, combinations that we have where you can cast them all day and you can cover so much ground and then find some snapper. So uh, have a quick look at the soft plastics or the soft baits. Um, these are probably four of the more more common ones I guess so the jerk shad which has been around forever uh, you can get those in five inch seven inch and even nine inch jerk shads so the jerk shad uh, curly tail grabs or you can get the nemesis tail as well so those curly tail lures work exceptionally well um, big creature baits like the mighty king shrimp it's another good one and then the paddle shad or these paddle tail style soft plastics all in that fantastic gulp formula that has uh, all that scent dispersion that snapper are really chasing so i'm going to go with the paddle shads today um, they swim down really well through the water column they look great they come in a range of different colors this is the black and gold one i'm going to run with this one and uh, and they also have that scent dispersion that i just spoke about so you've got vibration that attractive look and of course the scent dispersion as well. It doesn't matter what style of um, soft bait or soft plastic you're going to use, you've got to make sure you rig it straight. If it's, if it's bent up like that, it's not going to work. If it's bent down like that, if it's sideways, it's not going to look natural and it's not going to swim the way you want it to. So that's a 5830, great place to start. So just lay it alongside there, make your little mark in the back of the lure with the tip of the hook, just a little mark just there, and then I know where that needs to come out. There's a little pin mark there. So line it up nice and straight like so, slide it down through the centre of the lure, like that, out the back where you've made that mark, I didn't get that quite right, I've got it right there now, and then push it up what we call the grub keeper. So if it ends up like that, no, nah, that's no good. If it ends up like, like that, as I said, it's no good either, but once I push that up on the grub keeper, push him right up hard, you'll find he's sitting nice and straight. As far as jig heads go, and I've got a range of them here, so right down to a sixth for those really shallow areas uh, in calmer conditions, and then up to whatever you'd like to go to, up to an ounce. For me, if, if you're thinking about those shallow reefy areas that you're going to drift over, I'm working in that sort of quarter to three-eighths of an ounce. So you don't want that jig head firing down to the bottom really quickly and you're going to catch rock cod, rock cod and you're going to get snagged. Sergeant Baker's rock cod and you're going to get snagged pretty much is what's going to happen certainly in this part of the world. And you don't want it too light either. You don't want it just sitting on the surface and you know if you're drifting fast and there's a bit of wind and current either. So it's about changing it up and working out what's the right one to suit the job and you'll, you'll learn that through experience. But start off around that three eighths of an ounce in 15 to 20 metres of water and you're looking pretty good. There's a bit of a bubbly sort of washy section here. I reckon I'm a chance of a snapper over there, so I reckon we'll pack all this up, get sorted. Um, I'm ready to go with that paddle shad. I'm gonna fire a few casts in underneath the bubbles. So it's all about that big long cast when you're snapper fishing, so I've just fired one up right up into where those rocks are. And uh, it's a pretty good area here. A, there's a couple of things going on at the moment. We've got that sort of last of the last of the light happening. Just had a little bit of, oh, there he is. Got him on there now. So we've got a tide change occurring not too far away. So the key bite times, uh, certainly low tide, high tide. We've got a high tide in about an hour's time. We've got all this bubble mass that's going on here at the moment and snap of love hiding underneath that. They're not keen on bright sunshine in their eyes. So it's a big long cast. Oh, it's got this nice little fella straight up and in. There you go. See so you catch a snapper on a soft plastic. <laughs> so I'll just uh, show you what he looks like. So that's that paddle shad that we spoke about earlier. So there's a few different lures that you can use. But I, I, do, I do like those paddle shads at the moment. They suspend really well in the water column. They don't sink too fast. So it means that you've got that scent dispersion of the gulp working really, really well as it goes down through the water column. Um, as we mentioned before, there's king shrimps, there's, um, there's certainly jerk shads that we've always used for a long time, big curly tail type lures as well, but these paddle tail lures uh, certainly are, are really, really effective. I'll get the hook out of this bloke, put my sunnies back on, and see if we can't upgrade a little bit. I'll pop him back in. Oh, <laughs> he's keen to go back in. So I might fire a cast back up this way this time. Don't have too much and drop back, so that's my joining knot there. So. Um, 
This is a, what we call a uh, regiment, pen regiment rod. This one is uh, six to 10 kilo, 4,000 size spin reel, um, some 20 pound braid there, and either 20 or 30 pound fluorocarbon leader, depending on the size fish you're like to, likely to encounter. Okay, so a nice, another big long cast right up into that bubble zone. So get that bail arm over nice and quickly, and then just wind that bit of slack up and whether you're fishing washy areas like this or you're out in the deeper water and you're doing what we call drift casting where we're just drifting over shallow reefy areas which are all ideal places to catch snapper it's really important to stay in contact with what your lure's doing so there's no point having a whole heap of slack line laying on the water so that um, that paddle shad is swimming down through the water column there now i'm just following it down really at the moment it's swimming down underneath the bubbles give it a bit of a rip and a twitch so if there's a snapper looking at it, it's like oh hang on a sec What's going on there? And I'll just follow it down a little bit further. Give it another twitch and pause again and let that lure sink down. And when you're fishing areas like this or any really reefy structure, don't forget it starts up high and as you come down the edge, you really want to let that lure sink down and follow it closer to the bottom, certainly when it's before tide changes. So your peak bike times are late in the afternoon. We're getting later in the day today. Early in the morning is, real, is a really good time. And then the tide changes throughout the day. So um, when you get into those peak bite times, the snapper will actually come up quite high in the water column. So they'll be up uh, feeding underneath things like bait schools. They'll, they'll be hitting cuttlefish heads. Uh, they get up under these bubbly areas, as I said. But even in the middle of the day, you'll be surprised and you'll see them on your depth sander how high they'll come. So um, don't, don't put too heavy a jig head on. If you're fishing in that 10, 15, 20 metres of water, no point having a 5 eighths of an ounce or a 3 quarter ounce jig head and it's crashing to the bottom. You want that fluttering suspension style fall of your lure, no matter what profile lure it is. That's the key to getting a bite off a snapper. Oh, there he is. All right. So that's that big long cast, letting it sink down through the water column there. Oh. And the great thing about snapper is how they've turned into this fantastic sport fish, especially on tackle like this. Every bump and head shake that's happening there, I'm feeling it through, the, through that rod tip. Oh, there he goes. So what we're going to do, make sure we're organised. So I've got my net, it's right here. Get tension on that fish all the time. Once you get them up off the bottom, you're pretty right. You've got to put the, put the brakes on pretty hard there to start with and just make sure that they, uh, they're not gonna get you into the bottom. Oh. So nice soft hands, keep that tension. Here he comes, that's a beautiful looking fish. So net in one hand, and don't, don't, wind, don't wind too close to the fish. So I can easily bring that fish up, you can see there. Oh, come on bud, come on bud. And sneak him into the net like that, and we're done. So if you, if you wind too much line and you've got your rod tip down near that net, and we don't wanna see that, what we do want to see is a nice healthy snapper in the net. There we go, all right. I love it when a plan comes together. The idea was to show you a nice sized snapper on one of these paddle shads and we have done that right there, look at that. Afternoon sunshine. Hey, I'm not the only one who's excited about catching a snapper. Check out the size of this big turtle. I don't know whether he's followed the fish up. He's got his fin out waving there. There's some, hey, how are you bud? Yeah, it's all good. I'm just gonna let him go in a minute, thank you. No worries, I think he's worried about the welfare of this snapper. And so, certainly if you're gonna, <laughs> he's, he's coming over to say hello, check that out. That is amazing. Hey bud, <laughs> oh, he just worked out. He just worked out we're not, we're not another big turtle, we're actually humans and he's done a runner, so. Well, I gotta tell you, that is an absolute beautiful snapper. So he's taken a liking to that six inch uh, paddle shad, don't forget they're four inch, three inch, and there's a whole range of um, gulp laws that all work exceptionally well when it comes to snapper fishing. They, gulp is undoubtedly the best lure that you can use when you're snapper fishing because these fellas, they've got the big schnoz on the front there and they rely so much on their sense of smell when it comes to um, finding food. So the great thing about this is you've got the, the paddle tail creating all this vibration, you've got um, the attractive look of the lure in the first place so it, it looks like a, it looks exactly like a bait fish, different colours, you've got that, that transition between the gold and the fleck in it and you've got that scent dispersion so you've got three of the key things that you need for a really good lure all ticking the boxes there. I'll tell you that is a beautiful looking afternoon snapper. Alright buddy, thanks for the fight. I'll let him go eh? <laughs>